Xiao is a pretty standard DPS character, with his best in slot weapon being the Primordial Jade Winged Spear. His artifact main stat should be attack, animal crit, and his ideal artifact set would be the new 4 piece Vermilion Hereafter set. But you're not here for what is essentially the same load of crap that's been mindlessly regurgitated since Xiao's release. You're here because you want to build your Xiao the mathematically correct way. Today, I'm going to show you what the mainstream guides get wrong about Xiao and how you can avoid those mistakes and potentially save hundreds of dollars and hours of artifact farming to get the most damage out of your Xiao and the most value for your money. Before I begin showering you with tons of mathematical calculations, let us first take a look at how Xiao deals his damage. His elemental skill makes him quickly dash a short distance forward, generating three elemental particles and dealing damage to all enemies caught in his path. The skill has a 10 second cooldown per charge, alongside a very mediocre damage multiplier which is further held back by Xiao's animal element. It is a very bad way to deal damage and accounts for only about 10% of Xiao's total damage. The only real purpose of it is to help you reach a Xiao's elemental burst and to fill his downtime. Xiao's elemental burst on the other hand significantly buffs his jumping ability, normal, charge, and plunge attack damage percentage, and infuses his weapon with animal. It costs 70 energy and lasts about 15 seconds within its 18 second cooldown. With all these buffs combined, Xiao is able to unleash plunge attacks at high altitude, dealing massive AoE damage. It is through this method of plunge attacking that Xiao does most of his damage. This plunge attack uses the combined plunge damage modifier from your normal attack and the buff Xiao's burst provides. Hence, it is suggested to level your normal attack first as the plunge attack multiplier is almost doubled going from level 1 to level 10 then your elemental burst, which gives a similar return, and finally, if you really want to show your love for Xiao, level his skill. Now with that out of the way, let's explore the thing that most dynamically influences a character damage output, weapons. Most guys out there say that Primordial Jade Wing Spear would be Xiao's best in slot weapon, but mathematically, it doesn't really actually check out. Everyone is so attached to the notion that crit value is the most important stat nowadays and they completely forget about the importance of attack. Exactly, I'm talking about the Calamity quote. While obviously no one pulled on Shenhe's weapon banner for Xiao, mathematically however, it is actually very close and in some cases better and more consistent than the Jade Wing Spear due to Calamity Queller's weapon passive lasting 20 seconds at a time, meaning its attack percentage buff will almost always be on in addition to the 12 percentage all elemental damage percentage buff. With completely even artifact stats, you are essentially trading out 22% crit rate for around 400 or so attack, a fairly even trade. It also causes any attack percentage buff to be even more valuable, making this weapon easily able to surpass the Jade Winged Spear if other attack percentage buffs such as the Noblesse Oblige set or Tenacity of the Millilith is available. Contrary to popular belief, the Staff of Homa is actually kind of bad for Xiao, not mathematically at least. The weapon's passive gives very little value, as even if your Xiao is at level 90 and somehow reaches 20k max HP, the passive will only give a measly 150 attack, which is only worth about 15% of attack. Combined with its super low base attack, this weapon is nothing more than a crit damage stat stick. When compared to the Jade Cutter, you would be losing about 250 attack and potentially 12% damage for 20 crit value. That's even the best case scenario for the Staff of Homa. Realistically, you wouldn't even be getting 150 attack from a passive as to reach 20k max HP, you would require around 5 HP percentage subset rolls, making it in general terrible value, because even deathmatch is better. Now, you might look at deathmatch and think, Atomic, you just showed us how the Staff of Homa's terrible low base attack really ruined the weapon, but now you're telling us that deathmatch is viable? Well, here's the thing, I kind of actually lied about the Staff of Homa. But there is a huge catch that also applies to deathmatch. You see, the crit value of these two weapons is so high that it's higher than the crit value a circlet can provide. This means that you can instead swap out a crit circlet for an attack circlet with good crit value instead, making both of these weapons achieve very similar values to that of the Primordial Jade Wind Spear. Here's the calculations for it using 40% attack as substats. Keep in mind that these setups of Homa and Deathmatch will be gaining more crit value, as attack circlets are obviously still able to roll crit substats, meaning any substats will even out the additional crit value Jade Wing Spear weapon substat provides. As you can see from the above calculations, with this simple artifact trick, you can make even Deathmatch perform very similarly to the Jade Wing Spear. Even though this is heavily dependent on the artifacts you have, 
It is a way to vastly improve your Xiao's damage potential, whilst also potentially saving your money to pull on the Xiao weapon banner if you already have a high refinement deathmatch or a Staff of Homa lying around. One last weapon worth you mention is the Lithic Spear, which is in a very similar situation as Deathmatch with less team member flexibility, but provides both crit rate and attack percentage while also having a significantly higher base attack compared to Deathmatch. In summary though, with at least 3 Lyra characters in your team, and with the weapon being at R3 or higher, its performance will be very close to the Staff of Homa. Now, let's move on to the thing that all Genshin players dread the most, Artifacts. Almost all guys out there recommend players to use an attack percentage timepiece, an animal percentage goblet, and a crit circlet. Yep, you already know where this is going. Not only can an attack circlet sometimes help squeeze out more performance from your weapons than sacking more and more crit stats of a crit circlet, which actually diminishes in value, especially if your other pieces have good crit rolls. An attack circlet can also help complete either a 2 set or 4 piece set of artifacts, which would vastly improve Xiao's DPS than trying to force a crit circlet that's not of the right set. The same can actually be said about Xiao's Goblet too. Xiao's main source of damage as mentioned previously is done through his normal, charge, and plunge attacks, not through his skill. Therefore, the animal damage percentage a Goblet provides is actually not as good comparatively, due to Xiao gaining loss of extra damage percentage through his burst and his first ascension passive. An attack Goblet might just be more worthwhile to use. Take out Jade Wing's spear calculation with 2117 attack and an animal Goblet compared to 2595 attack with an attack Goblet. While with the same substats, the animal damage goblet will pull ahead slightly, but the fact that an attack goblet is even within 5-10% of a damage difference makes it still a viable choice if it can help complete a 4-piece or 2-piece artifact set, or if it has better substats and an alternative animal goblet. Speaking of artifact sets, the 4-piece Vermilion Hereafter set provides the most DPS, outclassing the 2-piece set quite a bit under normal circumstances as his 40% attack buff can be quickly stacked up. However, if you're using more than one attack main stat piece, the two-piece Veridus and Veneer set becomes much better due to overstacking attack percentage. The best artifact set out there is the four-piece Vermilion Hereafter set, then the two-piece Veridus and Veneer set plus any two-piece 18% attack set, and finally, the combination of two two-piece 18% attack sets. Stepping away from pure damage focus efficiency for a second though, the Vermilion Hereafter slash Echoes of an Offering domain is also the best domain to farm for it contains two sets with plus 18% attack which not only helps you conserve 50% of your resin, but also give your Xiao some nice starting artifact. Another trick is that since Xiao uses a plus 18% attack set, you can use the strong boxes within the alchemy table to try and get Gladiator's finale pieces, which helps you conserve even more resin. Xiao is a bad main DPS in the sense that while he has high multipliers, that's all he has. His animal element restricts him from any reactions, and his nature of attack locks him out from many teammates such as Xin Chiu and Xiang Ling, with others such as Bennett also not being favorable as a lot of Bennett's potential is wasted if paired with Xiao. Hell, even animal characters are really bad to pair with Xiao in the sense that all of their unique buffs are completely unusable by him, like Sukrus's EM share and Kazuha's elemental damage buff. This only leaves us with two animal characters who fall outside of this category, Jin and Sayu. Then Sayu requires too much on-field time for Xiao, so Qin is the only realistic animal option left. This trend of character elimination leaves Xiao with little to few optimal teammates. The only teammates that would mathematically provide the most damage for Xiao would be off-field damage dealers that do not require any condition for their damage to proc, such as Fischl and Albedo. An easy team for Xiao would be Xiao, Jin, Albedo, and Zhongli. As no character's potential is truly hurt in this team since Geo and Animo are both neutral elements that does not interfere with each other's synergies. This seemingly huge team building disadvantage can also be wielded as an advantage. As instead of focusing on buffing Xiao's personal damage, the other three slots can be seen as flexible slots to build completely different teams that can take advantage of Xiao's off time to unleash their respective first to do damage. For example, a completely insane idea would to be put Xiao alongside a mini Ayaka Freeze team. Xiao, Ayaka, Diona, Mona, or Kakomi. After Ayaka unleashes her burst, you can swap Xiao in to deal massive amounts of damage with his plunge attack. After Xiao's burst ends, you can swap back to Ayaka, her burst coming off of cooldown. Some bit of extra energy recharge is required to achieve this, but this team does cover up Ayaka's weakness of not having damage after her burst is cast. So there you have it, the mathematically correct way to build Xiao. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate that. Let me know in the comments if this should be made into a series, where I explore each character's builds properly with maps to show you what is actually the most optimal build.
This is Atomic, and I'll see you guys in the next one.